with the vast majority of the world's trade being transported by sea and a huge number of passenger vessels traveling the oceans at any time, occasional accidents are almost inevitable. What's inexcusable, though, is when incidents happen as a result of a simple oversight. Many of the mistakes in today's video could have easily been prevented. Let's take a look at 15 of the most expensive shipping mistakes. Number 15. Be Ever Given the Suez Canal is one of the most important shipping routes in the world. Connecting the Mediterranean with the Red Sea, it allows vessels to avoid having to sail all the way around Africa and significantly shortens travel times. With cargo ships getting bigger and bigger, though, there have long been questions about whether the canal itself needs to be widened, and the first example of the mayhem that could be caused by an incident was seen in March of 2021. The Ever Given, a 1,300-foot or almost 400-meter-long container ship that's operated by Evergreen, was being piloted through the canal when a strong gust of wind caused it to become wedged across the entire width of the waterway, blocking all traffic. Within five days, 369 ships had joined a queue to pass, which represented more than $9.6 billion worth of trade, and the cost kept escalating. It took six days to finally refloat the ship and take it to an inspection yard, where it was impounded, and it was then only released back to the company after a fine was paid, something that's believed to have been in the billions of dollars. The knock-on effect for the world's economy was probably the most expensive part of this mistake, though, and it was blamed for increasing shipping costs and times, which led to higher costs for goods, particularly across Europe at a time when the economies were already suffering because of the COVID pandemic. Number 14. The Prestige The MV Prestige, which was built in the mid-1970s, was a 797-foot or 243-meter-long oil tanker that had a total cargo capacity of 81,000 tons dead weight. The oil transportation industry is notoriously competitive and reliant on ships staying at sea for the majority of the year. And in this case of the Prestige, there have been suggestions that this pressure meant it hadn't been fully inspected and maintained for a long time. In normal conditions, this may not have been a problem, but you can never be entirely sure what you'll encounter at sea. In November of 2002, while carrying 77,000 tons of heavy fuel oil, it was caught in a violent storm off the coast of Galicia, Spain. Because of the risks, the French, Spanish, and Portuguese governments refused to allow the vessel to dock at any of their ports, and this meant that it was forced to remain at sea. Soon, the inevitable happened, and the Prestige sank in the ocean around 130 miles or 210 kilometers from the coast of Galicia, and it's believed as much as 60,000 tons of the heavy fuel oil was released into the water. The incident polluted thousands of miles worth of coastline, caused huge damage to local ecosystems, and because of the water temperature, was one of the most toxic oil incidents to ever take place. It was easily the worst environmental disaster in Spanish or Portuguese history, while in the subsequent court cases, the operating firm was ordered to pay 1.5 billion euros in damage. The true cost was far greater, something that's all the more tragic considering it could have been avoided if a proper maintenance schedule had been adhered to. Number 13. The Golden Ray First launched in August of 2016, the Golden Ray was a 660-foot or 200-meter-long car carrier that was able to carry as many as 7,400 vehicles at once. Responsible for carrying cargo around the world, this was a vessel designed to operate for decades, but its final voyage would take place just three years after its first. In September of 2019, shortly after unberthing from the harbor at the port of Brunswick in Georgia, it began to list in the water. It soon transpired that the cargo had been loaded onto the ship incorrectly, which led to it weighing significantly more on one side than the other. And before there was anything anyone could do, it had capsized. Luckily, all of the crew were rescued, but the ship and what it was carrying was a complete write-off. At the time, she was carrying a reported 4,300 cars made up of a number of Kia and Hyundai models that had just been produced in Mexico, as well as Chevrolet, GMC, Mercedes-Benz, and Ram ones too. Also, with nearly 24 full fuel tanks, there were concerns of an environmental disaster, but this was luckily averted after the toxic liquids were removed. A final assessment estimated that the cost of the incident may have been in the region to 80 to 100 million dollars, not including the cost of the salvage and removal of the wreck to allow the port to reopen. Number 12. The Sea Grand Often carrying hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars worth of cargo, ship owners and operators have to have the utmost faith and confidence in their crews to ensure the goods are safely delivered on time. 
Making a mistake with your hiring, though, can be catastrophic, and one of the most calamitous examples of this took place in early 2019. The 370-foot or 113-meter Sea Grant had been in port at Busan, South Korea, to pick up 3 million pounds of steel coils and set off for Vladivostok in Russia. The route it should have taken was north along the coast before turning into the Sea of Japan, but instead went into a small bay and headed directly towards the double-decker Guangang Bridge. The vessel smashed into it despite receiving radio messages to warn them of what was happening, and it created a huge hole in the underside of the bridge, as well as severely damaging the ship. What wasn't captured on the footage was that, following this, the Sea Grand turned around and sped off, and it was only when they were chased by the Coast Guard that the captain was taken into custody. He was found to be more than twice the legal alcohol limit at the time, which may go some way to explaining how any of this was possible. Number 11. The Ulysses and CSL Virginia You'd think that as you were steering a large vessel on the ocean, it wouldn't be too difficult to spot any other large ships in the region, but all it takes is a momentary lapse of concentration for things to go terribly wrong. That's exactly what happened in October of 2018 in the Mediterranean, when the Ulysses ferry that was traveling a routine route between Genoa and Tunis crashed into the CSL Virginia container ship that was at anchor. It took more than five days to separate the ships and far longer to clean up the oil that was spilled, and the subsequent investigation found that it had all happened because of human error. The watchkeeper on the ferry had been messaging and talking with people on his mobile phone at the time and was sitting in a position on the bridge that didn't give him an unobstructed view of where the vessel was heading, before going to fill in charts at a table behind a curtain which completely blocked the view just a few minutes before the incident. Add to this the fact that the ship's radar was out of use and neither of the two sets of binoculars on the bridge were usable, it became quite clear that the accident could have been completely avoided. Number 10. MV Rena Built in 1990, the ship that would be eventually renamed the MV Rena was a 774-foot or 236-meter-long container ship that was used to transport cargo around the globe. For 21 years, it would do this with great success, but in October of 2011, the crew made a fatal mistake. They were sailing from Napier to Taranga in New Zealand, but were unfamiliar with the waters. Fully relying on the navigational charts, they believed they had decided upon a route that would save them time, but had failed to notice a reef that was in their path. The Rena proceeded to run aground on the Astrolab Reef at full speed, and the first time anyone knew that something was wrong was when it lurched from one side to the other. Within just four days, a 3.1-mile or 5-kilometer oil slick had formed in the ocean where the fuel tanks had been breached, with hundreds of tons of the liquid having seeped into the water. Containers also fell into the sea, some of which held hazardous materials, and within a few weeks the vessel had completely split in two. The incident was described as the worst maritime environmental disaster in New Zealand's history, and still to this day, damage can be seen and is regularly assessed to understand the long-term impact. Number 9. The Explorer of the Seas the Explorer of the Seas is a more than 3,000 capacity cruise ship operated by Royal Caribbean International, and while it's still in operation today, it suffered a number of incidents that led to severe reputational damage for the company. The 1,020-foot or 311-meter-long vessel first set sail in 2000 and held the record for being the world's largest passenger ship for two years. Trouble first began for the Explorer of the Seas in September of 2012, when strong winds in a port in Bermuda pushed her into another cruise ship, and while neither ship was significantly damaged, this was just a sign of things to come. In January of 2014, due to improper food management and poor hygiene on board, 281 passengers and 21 crew members started reporting symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea. It was confirmed that there had been a norovirus outbreak on board, and by the time the cruise was canceled, almost 700 people had been infected. You could almost write that off as an unprecedented incident, and while the company claimed the whole ship had been thoroughly cleaned and measures introduced to prevent it from happening again, there was a significant outbreak of infectious diarrhea just the following year. On that occasion, 182 passengers fell ill, and on the same voyage, the ship was struck by a freak wave that caused further injuries meaning the vessel had earned itself the unfortunate reputation of being a serious health risk. Number 8. The Titanic 
Whenever a new ship is built, the designers use the latest technology and designs to make it the very best they possibly can. But there's perhaps no better example of overconfidence than the story of the Titanic. When it entered service in 1912, it was the largest passenger vessel ever to take to the seas, and the White Star Line had famously claimed it to also be one of the safest ships ever built, with various features intended to keep it afloat even in an unprecedented incident. Its hull had, for example, been split into 16 watertight compartments, and it was designed to be able to continue operating even if four of these were completely flooded. But on its fateful voyage from Ireland to New York, this wouldn't be enough. When it famously struck an iceberg, five of those compartments were torn open, and it took only a few hours for the ship to sink to a depth of more than 12,000 feet, or about 3,700 meters. A further design flaw had been to only include 20 lifeboats, which could accommodate less than half of the number of passengers that were on board. And this meant that in the freezing waters, there was very little chance of survival unless you made it into one. Of approximately 3,500 passengers, more than 1,500 died in what remains one of the most tragic and costly maritime disasters ever. Number 7. Hansa Constitution Navigational charts are vital for the crews of ships to avoid hidden rocky outcrops that lie beneath the surface, but on a clear day, you'd at least expect them to be able to see the headland that they're sailing past or avoid staring straight into it. It's not always that simple, though, especially when wind conditions are unpredictable, and this led to an unusual event in 2014 when the Hansa Constitution ran aground. The German registered vessel was carrying thousands of containers as it traveled out of Hong Kong, but a strong blast of wind turned it around and sent it directly towards the Stanley Ho Sports Center in the Pok Fu Lam district. In one last attempt to avoid a collision, the crew dropped the anchor, but it was to no avail, and the ship made contact. It became so stuck that other ships had to wait several days before two tugboats were able to pull it free and refloat it again. Of course, it suffered extreme damage, so had to go back to port to be repaired. And still, to this day, the company has refused to admit how exactly this happened. There are suspicions, though, that due to poor maintenance, there was a sudden loss of power just when the wind hit, and this would have made it impossible to steer. Number 6. The Exxon Valdez the Exxon Valdez is a name that's gone down in history for all the wrong reasons, and it's the ship that in 1989 caused one of the worst oil spills in United States history. The 987-foot or 301-meter oil tanker was traveling from Alaska to Long Beach in California with a full load of oil. The journey had started right to plan, but had begun several hours late, and this led to several mistakes by the crew. Because some were tired, they didn't keep the correct process of ensuring that there were at least two officers on the bridge at a time, and this is believed to have led to a number of navigational errors. By the time any problems had been noticed, the crew had only just called the captain when the ship ran aground on Bly Reef at Prince William Sound in Alaska, and over the course of the next few days, more than 10.8 million gallons of crude oil was released into the water. As it happened in such a remote place, the cleanup was an immensely difficult task. It's also a vital habitat for animals such as salmon, otters, seals, and birds, all of which were majorly impacted by the spill. And in total, it's thought to have negatively affected more than 1,300 miles or 2,100 kilometers of coastline, where the effects can still be seen to this day. Exxon was forced to pay half a billion dollars in punitive damages, along with $2 billion for the cleanup and a further billion in civil and criminal cases, making it not only an environmental disaster, but a financial one too. Number 5. The Hyundai Fortune First setting sail in 1996, the Hyundai Fortune was a 900-foot or 274-meter-long container vessel that was capable of carrying up to 5,500 20-foot equivalent units. For 10 years, it successfully carried out voyages around the world, but during this time, the crews working on it were changed a lot, and many weren't familiar with the safety requirements needed to operate it effectively. This came to a head in March of 2006, when, due to poor loading, there was an explosion of hazardous material from somewhere below deck that caused around 80 containers to fall into the water and a huge fire to break out through the stern of the ship. At the time, it was in the Gulf of Aden to the south of Yemen, and after picking up cargo in China and Singapore and heading towards the Suez Canal. 
Its position meant that it was relatively tricky for rescue crews to reach, so after they were unable to contain the fire, the crew were forced to abandon ship and wait for help to arrive. It was two days until firefighting tugs got to the vessel, and by that time, it was listing and severely damaged. Amazingly, they were able to extinguish the fire and tow the ship to port so it could be repaired. There was still an estimated $800 million worth of damage though, which could have been entirely avoided according to an investigator, had a container full of flammable material not been stored next to the engine room. Number four, Carnival Cruise Triumph. The Carnival Triumph, which has now been renamed the Carnival Sunrise to detach itself from its troubled past, is an 893-foot or 272-meter-long liner operated by Carnival Cruises. Its maiden voyage was in 1999, and it has a capacity of up to 3,000 passengers, and it was the first of the Triumph class of vessels. It's thought that the company prioritized money-making cruises rather than ensuring the systems were well-maintained and up-to-date, and this led to a rather unfortunate incident in 2013 that saw it being nicknamed the Poop Cruise. Early one morning in February, a fire started in the aft engine room. Automatic extinguishers dealt with it as they were supposed to, but it resulted in a loss of power and propulsion. An unexpected consequence of this, though, was that the wastewater systems failed, and this caused raw sewage to back up into the passenger areas, posing a significant health hazard. As there was a lack of power, the ship was adrift and had to be towed back to port. What makes this surprising was that it was the fourth time that a Triumph-class ship had experienced an engine fire and a power failure like this, while the others didn't have that same issue in the aftermath. It was potentially a problem that the company was more than aware of. The company was found to be blamed for it and urgently refitted similar vessels to ensure it wouldn't happen again. Number three, the Stellar Banner. The Stellar Banner was a Marshall Islands registered container ship that mainly traveled the route between South America and China carrying iron ore. Having left port in Brazil on its way to China in February of 2020, and with 295,000 metric tons of iron on board, it hit the seabed and the crew dropped anchor to assess the situation and control the flooding. Within a few hours, it was clear that there was little they could do to fix the damage, and the decision was made to intentionally ground it. Over the following weeks, most of the cargo was carefully removed at vast cost, so it could be refloated, and then it was decided that it was too severely damaged to fix, so it was scuttled around 60 miles off the coast of Brazil, with all its remaining cargo still on board. This would seem like an innocent incident that had happened. Had it not been for the information that was uncovered in the ensuing investigation, the master had decided to deviate from the planned route without having all the necessary hydrographic information at hand, and had steered into shallow waters that no other vessel would have ever tried to navigate. Number two, the MOL Comfort. Launched in 2008, the MOL Comfort was a 1,036 foot or 316 meter long container ship that was one of 12 that were built with the same design. With a capacity of 8,120 foot equivalent units, it was a huge and heavy vessel, and this meant that when it encountered difficulties in June of 2013, there was very little anyone could do about it. The vessel was around 230 miles or 370 kilometers off the coast of Yemen on a route between Singapore and Saudi Arabia when a crack developed in the midship during a violent storm. It had soon split into two, and while both sections remained afloat at first, one of them sank and the other burst into flames and destroyed all of the cargo on board. In total, it's believed to have cost around $400 million in damage, and it's lucky there were no environmental consequences of the incident either. As for the cause, it was because the weakest point of the ship, the hatch side combings, hadn't been built tough enough to endure extreme conditions, and this was the first time any ships of its type had been subjected to such loads. The others were quickly taken out of operation, so upgrades could be performed before they were raided to sail once more. Number one. Costa Concordia. The Costa Concordia was the biggest passenger vessel disaster in recent times and resulted in the death of 34 people. The cruise ship, which was 952 feet or 290 meters long, had a capacity of almost 4,000 people and regularly sailed routes through the Med. In January of 2012, however, the vessel struck an underwater rock and this caused it to capsize and sink in shallow waters off the coast of Tuscany in Italy. Most people were rescued, and after several years, the ship was salvaged, 
but the entire incident was the result of a catalog of errors by the ship's captain. The first mistake was that he altered the route, not to be more efficient or save time, but because he wanted to salute people on shore. This was apparently a common thing to do, but by taking the Concordia into less known and shallower waters, it was asking for trouble. The other thing the captain did was he left the ship while there were still hundreds of passengers on board, which hampered the rescue operation. By the end of it, the operating company is believed to have spent more than $2 billion on compensation, cleanup, and legal fees, which is more than triple the $612 million it cost to build the ship in the first place. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.